Okay, this is going to be a short video because it's going to involve some glue drying. So we kind of have to wait for that. But I wanted to point out from part one into here, you can see I got all of the cathodes, all the negative leads of the tied together, soldered together, brought them up, brought them up through a wire up to here where I could get to them. Got all the positive sides of the LEDs all connected together. In this case, I'm running them through a 39 ohm resistor and I brought it right on up to one of the contacts on the switch. Now over here on the uh, body LEDs, you can see this chain of solder going through there. That's all the negatives, all the cathodes tied together. Now all the positive ones I've snipped short and pre-tinned with some solder, bent them over and pretend them with solder so they'd be ready to go. Now they're what they're also was printed as two of these little risers and you want to print those of course no supports required and they're going to be going I'm going to hold it this way so maybe gravity can help me they're going to be going in roughly like like so and the point of these actually I've got them turned backwards they go they go like so. The points of these are going to be to hold the circuit board up above the LEDs and yet low enough that the uh, bottom cap can go on. So it's just a little riser in the end. It's going to hold, provide a place to hold that circuit board convenient above the LEDs. So I'm going to be gluing those in to get them in the way, but the but I wouldn't let that hold me up from wiring because they're so small. What's going to take more time is I'm going to glue in the battery pack and I'm going to bring it in with the leads facing down like that. Now you don't want to push your battery pack all the way up to one side or all the way to the other. You kind of want it in the center and you want it kind of like that. I mean not all the way against the switch although it wouldn't hurt anything but just give yourself a little room. Just kind of float it around in there like that. And I'm going to use the E6000 to hold that in there because it's thick and it'll take a while to set up. Once that has set up though, then I'm going to take the leads from it and carefully kind of super glue tack them down in place so the red one comes over to the, to the switch and the black one I'm just going to kind of route around. Actually, I could go anywhere. I could solder onto this ground here because ground is going to be ground. But if I didn't want to do that, I could bring it all the way up and join the ground wire up here in the top. But that's going to take some time for that to dry. Um, so that's that's all we're going to be covering in this short little video because of the, the dry time on this part. I kind of need this in there now because it's going to be handy to be able to have battery power to test, you know, what we're doing as we move forward. In fact, uh, just in testing to make sure that the... LEDs and everything are all still working. They didn't make any screw-ups. It's kind of nice to have the battery power handy so that you can do that testing in there. So, um, yeah. If you're not familiar with the E600, if you haven't watched my other build videos, it originally back in the old days was sold under the name Goop and then they changed it to being the E600. You know, there is uh, a YouTuber that turned me on to the B7000. The nice thing about the B7000 is it basically seems very much like this glue. It is slightly different because I can smell the difference in the solvent. But what's really nice about this is it comes down to a little metal tip. So it makes it real easy when you're doing projects. This wouldn't be one of them because here I actually want to slop on a whole lot of glue under there. I want it to go everywhere. But this will extrude just a little bit and you can get into places where you can just get just that little bit you want. And because there's this piece of metal in the lid and there's that piece of metal there, when you go to close it up, you don't have to worry about this clogging. Whereas these ones with this big uh, screw top, pretty much guarantee that that's going to dry over time and you're going to have to you know peel that clog off out of the way plus you can see with an opening that big it's kind of hard if you were trying to get it into just particular places so if you like the E6000 for joining dissimilar things like 
plastic to glass or metal to plastic or 3D printed parts that you might want to be able to pull apart later. The E6000 or the B7000. Got this off Amazon. Got these two giant tubes of this for like 10 bucks. So it's uh, cost effective as well. It's just hard to squirt out a large amount of this and this is thinner than it is just to push out a big booger of this when you want to basically coat the back side of a battery pack real quick. It's easier just to use this to do that. And um, other than that, they seem to be similar in strength. It's just that normally you put so much less of this on that I really can't compare them strength-wise. I know the things I do with this are solid, but then again I also know there is a lot of glue on them, whereas this just puts out a little bit and just puts it right where you want it. So depending on what you're doing, this could be the way to go for your projects. We'll talk more about that in other projects because I've only had this for a couple of weeks now and I'm still experimenting with it, see what I think. But uh, that'll be the end of part two where I'm going to let this dry. When we come back, um, this battery pack should be in and I should have the red wire soldered over to the center terminal, the switch and the black wire soldered to ground. And at that point, we'll be talking about wiring in the sequencer.